Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Would it surprise you to know that Bobby Lane, a great quarterback, won two NFL championships? Would it surprise you to know that Broadway Joe Namath, a guy who was known for staying out late, who actually had an ownership interest in some New York nightclub, uh, a guy who apparently was consorting with numerous beautiful women during his playing career. Did you know that he was the first AFL quarterback to win the Super Bowl, Super Bowl III, and that Joe Namath right now is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Would it surprise you to know that Terry Bradshaw at different times in his life had different issues? Right, Terry Bradshaw suffers from depression. He also admits to having uh, had a lot of alcohol. Right, Terry Bradshaw won four rings. Now that's the reality. Anything else anyone tries to tell you is not. Right, understand if you're a gambler, your agenda doesn't conform with anyone else's. Right? It doesn't coincide with the NFL's agenda, which is to, you know, be appealing to corporate sponsors. Right? It's also to be appealing to the fans. You don't want the players to come across as pampered jerks. You want the players to come across as people working hard for the fans' money. Right? You want you know the money that fans are paying and it's a lot of money right those tickets aren't cheap to watch games you want the fans to feel that their quarterback is eating and sleeping football not that the quarterback is out on the town in Las Vegas hanging out with Justin Bieber and Floyd Mayweather right but the reality is different the reality shows that you could be a full-blown alcoholic like Bobby Lane and yet win multiple NFL championships, right? Understand, too, with all due respect to a guy I admire, Boomer Esiason, I listen to Boomer's podcast. It's a good podcast on CBS Sports. And Boomer played, right? He was the quarterback opposite Joe Montana in that Super Bowl when Montana hits John Taylor to end it in the late 80s, Right? You know, Boomer, of course, is on some of these NFL pregame shows, right? Understand, Boomer's bread is buttered in part by his access to the NFL, right? So his interests are going to coincide somewhat with the NFL's interests, right? The NFL is a league that, you know, is very image conscientious, right they have an agenda right they want to appeal to sponsors and fans so many in the mainstream media who receive part of their income from the NFL and from access to the NFL right and or access to the NFL they'll be afraid to talk about the fact that a lot of the publicity spin doesn't conform to the reality of Bobby Lane winning multiple NFL championships, of Joe Namath being a Hall of Famer, right? Being the first man to pass for 4,000 yards in a season, right? During his heyday when he's wearing mink coats and hanging out, right? So my point to you is this. You can't believe everything you hear, not even this video slash audio, right? You need to be a skeptic. You need to do your own research, right? When you do your own research, you're going to find out that Johnny Manziel is not the drinker Bobby Lane was or Joe Namath was or, in a different sport, another all-time great, Mickey Mantle was. He's not. He's not the partier these guys were, 
right? He's simply not, right? What's to prevent Johnny Manziel from having the upside, from realizing some of the career accomplishments of a Bobby Lane? Really nothing. Also, this competition with Brian Hoyer, a guy who's on his fourth team, a guy who once got released during a season by the Pittsburgh Steelers, a guy who has started four more NFL games, four, that's it, one hand, right, four more NFL games. Let me, let me hold up four fingers so people understand I can, right, four. More NFL games than Johnny Mansell, right? The idea that Brian Hoyer is a real opponent for Manziel in some quarterback competition. Brian Hoyer, who never threw for 3,000 yards in any college season. Brian Hoyer, who isn't the scrambler in the pocket of Manziel and who doesn't match Manziel, as I make this video, in rushing yards this preseason, right? A guy who you would have to believe for him to be, you know, viewed as real competition for Manziel, right? A guy who would have to be a much better passer than Manziel. And the stats show that he isn't, right? The idea that Hoyer really is in a real competition with Manziel to be the long-term starter of the Cleveland Browns is simply ridiculous. Right? If you're Cleveland, understand, ties, if the two guys grade out at the same, the tie should go to the younger man because he has the greater time horizon. Right? For Brian Hoyer to beat out Manziel, he would have to play appreciably better than Manziel. And he's not. So, of course, as the media dissects Johnny Manziel, you're going to hear that he's a partier. Why? Because he's hanging out with, you know, Tyrese and Floyd Mayweather. I mean, understand, Mayweather doesn't even drink. Do you feel the people Joe Namath hung out with didn't drink? Right? He doesn't even drink. I don't think I've ever heard that Tyrese is a big partier. Right? Just because these guys are known doesn't mean they're bad influences or drinkers. These guys might actually be the consummate professionals themselves. Right? There's no evidence that Johnny Manziel has ever shown up on the job wasted like there is with, let's say, Mickey Mantle. Right? Mantle himself admits showing up to ball games a little bit wasted, right? Hung over from the night before, right? So, as a gambler, you've got to feel lucky that Manziel's public relations are as bad as they are. you got to feel lucky that people are focused on whether Manziel flipped off the Washington Redskins bench, right? Then they are whether the incident would even be reported if instead of flipping off the bench, which gives a visual which hurts the NFL's public relationships with its sponsors and fans, if Manziel had simply trash-talked the bench, as countless players do, would we even be hearing about that incident? More importantly, what does that incident have to do with Manziel's play on the field? Right, so count me among those who fully expects Johnny Manziel to be the starting quarterback for the Cleveland Browns by the fifth game of this season. Right, he's not going to be holding a clipboard all season. Let's get real. He's ready to go right now. Brian Hoyer has some talent. He's not Tom Brady, who we used to back up. He's not Joe Montana. Right, he's not, dare I say, Johnny Football. Right? So, let's hope that the press and the media and the public mood this is other talented athletes, the way it's dissing Johnny Manziel, because that'll give us an opportunity to be on the other side of the play.
you know, as I said before, talent matters. Right? If Bobby Lane, Joe Namath, and Terry Bradshaw could win rings while having much more personal challenges, much more bigger personal challenges than Johnny Manziel, then it's ridiculous to assume that Johnny Manziel, even as he spends his free time however he chooses, you know, can't have an impact in the NFL. That's simply not what history shows us. Right? Let's see what Manziel does. Right? My point to you is don't be too carried away by press reports this morning. And you should view with suspicion and skepticism every bit of sports news you receive from analysts, including these videos. Right? You know, Boomer Esiason has an agenda. The people paid by the NFL have an agenda. Corporate sponsors have an agenda. Right? Not all of those agendas are directly correlated to the ability of a particular athlete to be successful in the game. Right? Brian Hoyer is not a better passer than Johnny Manziel. Manziel, I don't care if he's 5'11 or whatever, has an above average arm by NFL standards. And let's just say Brian Hoyer, you know, hasn't done anything in the preseason to really distinguish himself from Johnny Manziel. If it's close, I'm sorry, the tie should go to the better scrambler, the more accomplished college quarterback, the guy who seems to me to be a natural leader. And don't kid yourself, right? You can say to yourself, hey, look, how could this guy be a leader when he's out late at night, etc.? Bobby Lane was a leader, Right? Just because you're late at night gallivanting doesn't mean you're not the focal point of your team. Doesn't mean that guys aren't ready to go to the mat for you. Right? During the United States Civil War, an argument can be made that the best general was Ulysses S. Grant, a guy who now historians consider to have been an alcoholic. One doesn't disqualify the other. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me also point out that I'm not making a factual assertion that Johnny Manziel is an alcoholic. All I'm saying is the media focus on whether this guy goes to bed early at night is misplaced. Judge him on his play. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.